America's withdrawal from Afghanistan came nearly two decades after the attacks of 9-11. During those years, more than 2,400 Americans lost their lives in Operation Enduring Freedom, and the sacrifice of so many families continues. KSHB 41 News anchor Lindsey Shively shares two soldier stories. You know, when I'm having a bad day, I'm 100 feet away from coming out here. Was there a reason you wanted something peaceful like this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that transition from the military to civilian life is not easy on anybody. That transition led veteran Patrick Montgomery to start this cattle ranch in Weston. You know, I kind of looked at the whole corporate world and I just decided it wasn't for me. He says he joined the military in 2010, but his journey to serve started years before. I still wanted to join the military before 9-11, but that kind of solidified things. He was 11 years old on September 11th and remembers seeing images like these from his classroom. So I went home that day, I sat next to my dad on the couch, and I remember him saying, like, this is our Pearl Harbor, my generation's Pearl Harbor. And I just remember, you know, going upstairs and making a promise that, to myself and, you know, the, the powers that be that if that war was still going on when I was a fighting age, that, you know, I'd go do my part. That day. That day. A promise he did not forget, later serving as an Army Ranger in the 1st Ranger Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, and serving in Afghanistan, just like Staff Sergeant Jeremy Katzenberger. He was a huge role model for me. I didn't have any actual brothers growing up, so he's the closest thing I had. This was our trip back to Kansas City. He was trying to make the same face as you. <laughs> Colleen Katzenberger talks about her husband, Jeremy, with their son, Everett, a lot. And on Sundays, sadness wins, but most days is joy and reminders of Jeremy's legacy and service fill their home. I have to check my anger whenever it gets sad because I just feel so helpless. And then I think my initial reaction with that is just anger that I can't protect my child from this story. Jeremy was killed in Afghanistan in 2011. I was down in Kandahar um, in Afghanistan. That's the you know southern province there. And Jeremy was more towards central. Um, and you know he got killed in a, a firefight there. You know, I buried so much more than just my husband. Like my child was only seven months old. And the idea, you know, he just having more kids or growing old with somebody. Patrick, Colleen's brother, brought Jeremy home. I definitely went down a pretty dark path there after he got killed. Um, I lost three more buddies from our battalion uh, within that year afterwards. Now it has been 10 years since losing Jeremy and 20 years since the attacks that changed so much. I distinctly remember when 9-11 happened and I teach juniors and seniors in high school now and they weren't even born. And when I sit and talk with them about it, it's, it's very odd because it was such a pivotal moment in my life. It changed my life in a course that I could have never, never imagined. Do I wish I still had Jeremy with me every day? <laughs> Absolutely. But am I so thankful for the men and women that have prevented another massive attack and kept the war away from us? Yeah. And um, that gratitude runs deep for me. Patrick named his first child after Jeremy. There are so many stories from 9-11 impacting people right here in the metro, including a local doctor who was at ground zero. They weren't going to give up, and they, they just worked to the bone. We share her story and how it's impacted the medical industry, coming up later in our show. Well, good late evening. 74 degrees right now downtown, 69 degrees at KCI Airport, and it's 70 degrees in Olathe. Tomorrow is Red Friday, and it is red in Cabo San Lucas, southern Baja, California, getting battered by a hurricane. We'll talk about that and your Red Friday forecast coming up next. Thank you, sir. KSHB 41, your home of the Chiefs. GHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium. It has a lot going on, right? A new name, a new season, and now the unveiling of the new Hall of Honors, a place where fans can see the team's history come to life. KSHB 41 News reporter Megan Abundus was there to show us. The field level concourse looks a whole lot different after a multi-million dollar renovation. Chief CEO Clark Hunt says this is a place for fans, players, and their families. The Chiefs are just three days out from welcoming home 76,000 fans. Your team is 39-9 and nine the past three years. That's the best in the National Football League. 
and all eyes are on the sterling silver. You just got to be first of everything. 2015 Hall of Famer Will Shields was the first to see the new Hall of Honors. The cool thing about it is I can't wait to see my family to be able to come and actually celebrate it and see a part of it. Former Chiefs and multiple Hall of Famers came together to celebrate franchise success. All of you are a Chief, and this is your hall, and a place to bring your family and friends to say, this is where I played. This is the family that I played for. This is a place like no other. Artifacts, memorabilia, history dating back to the 60s. The men on these walls all help shape the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm very proud of our team, and I don't want to jinx anything. But as Mitch pointed out, I think we have a pretty good chance of winning a few more games this season and hopefully adding some more trophies to this beautiful trophy case. In Kansas City, I'm Megan Abundis, KSHB 41 News. Chiefs fans in Leewood had the chance to get hyped ahead of Sunday's game. A Chiefs-themed photo bus set up shop at the Town Center Plaza. Chiefs Kingdom took pictures, got pumped to cheer on their hometown team. Lessons learned at Ground Zero, how a local doctor's experience is preparing students in med school right now. We are less than two years away from this new single terminal at Kansas City International Airport being ready for people to come in and get those flights. We're also coming up on the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. This week, as we prepare for this anniversary, we'll talk about how this new terminal is much more prepared for any changes that could come in the future of airport security than the old terminal was. That is tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. on KSHB 41. You're watching KSHB 41 News, awarded by the Missouri Broadcasters Association for Best Breaking News and Station of the Year. At Ground Zero, she was fresh out of med school at the time, but as Andres Gutierrez reports, those days spent in the rubble are now key lessons for future doctors. Who are we going to find? What rescues are we going to make? That fateful morning of September 11th, 2001, Dr. Stephanie Evers watched a horror and tragedy unfold on television. Within hours, Evers, who graduated UMKC Medical School a year earlier, was on her way to New York City as part of an urban search and rescue team. And as you get there, the whole place is covered in ash. There's no electricity. There's no running water. Everything, it, it, it looks like a third world country. She captured these images of the hellscape in lower Manhattan. That was ground zero. Unfortunately, within the first 48 hours, we knew pretty quickly that our mission was going to shift from rescue to recovery. But that never wavered New York City first responders who lost so many. They weren't going to give up, and they, they just worked to the bone. They didn't eat. They didn't sleep. They were, you know, just going for hours and hours and hours on end. Some of the lessons from the terror attack are now taught at her med school by Dr. Erica Carney. Lack of communication was key. You didn't know who was coming in from where. I do think the key components for all of us when it comes to deploying to an event like that identification what is your role what is your hierarchy and not going outside of that dr ever says 9 11 reaffirmed her commitment to emergency medicine treating patients at olathe health for more than a decade most recently dealing with covid i think that we've lost sight of that that ability to come together as a country and I hope that by kind of going back through the sentiment and the feelings and, and the way that everyone felt on 9-11, that maybe we can get back to that again. In Olathe, Andres Gutierrez, KSHB 41 News. The New York City Fire Department lost 343 members on 9-11. Days after, members from KCFD traveled to New York to pay respects. There were firefighters from every corner of the United States who were attending these uh, these services, and it was just uh, it was just very, uh, very very humbling to be there and and to be in a city that uh, had had such tragedy uh, you know they were uh, they were just they were very thankful that we were there even though we told everybody we're not New York City guys they were still happy we we're there you can hear more stories in honor of 9-11 from people right here in the metro all online at kshb.com and your favorite streaming device Okay, we want to send a big thank you to everyone who's donated so far in our Fill the Fridge food drive. It's a way to get fresh produce, milk, meat, and more to families in need right here in the metro. We caught up with a lot of do donators today, including Peter, who donated a shopping cart full. I think they just should look into their own hearts and just decide that, uh, you know, if they can afford to spend a few extra dollars, what's the big deal? I mean, it would help a great, great, great deal. I see you, Peter. That's what I'm talking about. 
You still have two more days to donate. We'll be out at the Price Shopper in Leewood tomorrow along Mission Road near 135th. Gary, Peter's a big fan. Well, I, I, first of all, I saw the ads on the program because we watched 41. You know, Gary Lezak is one of my reasons for living. <laughs> Gary Lezak, one of my reasons for living. Oh, Peter, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's, that's amazing. Uh, and thank you for that shopping cart full of uh, groceries there. So appreciate that. Wow, I'm humbled. Uh, how is everybody doing? It's almost Red Friday. 35 minutes and 35 seconds. 30, yeah, I think that, that, that was exactly right. Looking downtown Kansas City, we're painting the city red tomorrow and we're ready for that updated Chiefs forecast. Right now it is 69 degrees, south southeast wind at nine miles per hour. The dew point's back up to 60. So you can start to feel humidity. The humidity's going up, the wind's going up, the temperatures are going up. So let's hope the Chiefs arrow is going up as well as we go to our first game. Hurricane Olaf, Hurricane Larry, and the remnants of Mindy. Olaf is the biggest concern right now as it is coming right over Cabo San Lucas. So Cabo on the southern tip of Baja California, a resort area, a lot of people go travel there, just got hit by a hurricane, 75 to 90 mile per hour winds. So I'm sure there's gonna be some uh, problems and some devastation down there. It's not a powerful hurricane, but you can see the eye went right over the southern tip of Baja California. It's gonna move back out into the Pacific Ocean and weaken, but wow. Uh, interesting hurricane season there now as well. Off to the northeast of that is the opposite of a hurricane. This is the anti-cyclone, the heat wave creating machine of summer. It causes sinking air. It's heading this way, but watch what happens. Over the next five days or so, the jet stream starts getting stronger. Fall is approaching. This falls apart and stretches out. And we should get a cold front in here around Tuesday with a very good chance of rain and thunderstorms. Tomorrow, though, should be fantastic for Friday. Friday night in the big town looks dry over across a large part of the country. On 9-11, it'll be a fairly quiet day. 20 years ago, it was eerily quiet after all the planes were grounded and there was no air traffic above us, and it was also obviously also a calm day. As we go to Sunday for the Chiefs, we do have some great weather, a front to the north. Showers are possible up across Nebraska and Iowa, but not here. I'm going with no chance of rain Sunday. By Sunday night, Monday into Tuesday, a cold front moves through, and this is the American model, and then the European model, look at this similar so a very good chance of rain and thunderstorms on Tuesday with colder air moving in for a day or so nothing too fall like though we bring you that most accurate forecast 82 our forecast today we hit it on the nose David Bateman of Kansas City Missouri watch at the end of the month we'll do this at 6:30 on our newscast we'll be giving away a thousand dollars at the end of this month 89 degrees for tomorrow increasing humidity and a little windy the wind will be up the next three days for your golf game, 10 to 25 miles per hour, 90s, low 90s into Monday, then 81 Tuesday.